Hi, I'm Carrie with Jen Art Pulse, and we're here on the dock with Tokyo Police Club. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Maybe you want to go around and introduce yourself and say what part you play in the band? I'm Greg, and I play drums. I'm Graham, and I play keyboards. I'm Josh, and I play guitar. Not picture David, who sings in this bass. And sleeps. Yes. He is sleeping back at the hotel. Long night. So, um, are you guys super stoked to be touring with your friends, the Cold Market? Yes, we are. Extremely. There, I hadn't really, I'm afraid to say, I hadn't really listened to them before we got the tour, but I made up for that and I love them a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy to be out with them. They put on a great show. Well, that was sort of my next question. Um, do you guys have, have you ever met before you went on tour together? And how familiar um, were you? We sort of. We yeah. played with them in London, so we met them very briefly when we were in London, but that was about it. But we've uh, warmed up to each other fairly quickly, I think. Um, how do you guys get from show to show? Do you guys carry a van together, or are you just... Playing? No, we have um, our own crappy van that we uh, are subjected to. Um, it's and like, what, they roll inside? Yeah, yeah, they, they have, have a, a nice much nicer van. They have, they have someone style. to uh, drive them places. It's just us four. And so uh, we have to deal with it breaking down and the lack of heat or air conditioning. So, yeah, how that's us. How do you guys uh, pass the time on the roads? Play any, um, um, any car games or we tried or that and we just <laughs> argued. It ends up in like tears and like <laughs> arguments and really loud yelling. We just matches. argue over the rules before we even start playing. The yeah, game and then that's it. That's the game. Um, <laughs> so nowadays we sort of, I mean, the driver drives, the uh, navigator navigates, and then the other two people either listen to music or watch DVDs on their computer or, or sleep. sleep. Yeah. So you guys do things solo. You all play do music on your own iPod and stuff? Yeah, I mean, we sometimes we have a satellite radio, so sometimes we'll listen to stuff, but there's enough disagreement with that that yeah. it's easier just to listen to your own thing. And plus, I mean, it's good to have private time because you don't really get real private time, so if you put your headphones on at least, you can kind of pretend that you're on your own for a minute. Do you guys have something on your iPod that you consider a guilty pleasure? Any uh, Justin Timberlake? <laughs> Nelly Furtado. Yeah, we are Nelly big Nelly. Nelly. And we uh, love Blink-182. Yeah, huge yeah. Blink-182 fans. I don't feel guilty about any of that. No, no not at all. <laughs> but some people would say that uh, shit. Fergilicious was a big um, hit in our band in November when it came out. No, I would consider that a guilty Really? I don't usually like Fergie, so that's a, I, I yeah. did feel a bit guilty because usually I think Fergie's pretty But the awful. song was just so that awesome great. that it totally won me over. Um, so a big early show for you guys was the Pop Montreal Festival. Um, what do you think is the difference in the experience between how you guys have been touring from the beginning and how it is now? Um, well, as we were saying about our van, we used to tour in a minivan. So uh, we're actually touring in way more style mm -hmm. now than we used to. I think the first Pop Montreal was done in a sedan with yeah. uh, girlfriends and equipment on laps. Yeah. And so uh, we have a lot more room now. Um, Still not enough for yeah. more. more room. Mm -hmm. You get, I mean, I think you just get good at touring the more you do it. You learn how to keep yourself healthy. I mean, it used to be every time you stopped at a rest station, you'd stock up on chocolate bars and chips and Coke. And yeah. now, I mean, we still do that to a degree, but yeah. now we're asking you know, you have for to be careful like with what you put in your body. some vegetables yeah. and stuff when we get to the venue. And we've gotten really good at just uh, trying to avoid all those horrible vices like candy and stuff that uh, would tempt us before. Um, are there big things that you guys miss back at home that like, as soon as you get back to the home city, you go for if there's a certain restaurant or... Girlfriends. Our girlfriends. Girlfriends <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, our mothers. You go <laughs> home and your mom has cooked you a really nice meal. Just mm -hmm. You can't beat it on the road. It's so nice to come home to. Also your own bed. Yeah, sleeping alone. Or, yeah, alone. Alone. Is uh, something that doesn't happen often, if ever, when we're on tour. So, um, yeah, you have to get used to that really quickly. But, you know, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm like, Dave, Dave, where are you? He's not here. And then I remember. I woke up, I, again. Josh and I sleep together on the road, because we're too cheap to buy more mm -hmm. than two beds. And I actually, I remember we got back from our last month-long tour, and I was sleeping with my girlfriend. And I woke up, and she was rolling over to, you know, come snuggle or whatever. And for this, a split <laughs> second, I freaked out because I thought Josh. I just thought it was Josh. I thought Josh had finally cracked. It was coming in for the hug. So that that's when I knew that I'd been on tour for too long. So I know we talked about this a little bit upstairs, but um, for our viewers, uh, 
have you guys caught any good shows while you're here at South by Southwest? Do you make the time to check out other bands and, um, and scope out who your competition saw, is? <laughs> uh, we saw Matt and Kim last night. Mm -hmm. and we had the honor of playing with them. Yeah, they were, they were fantastic. Fantastic just musicians, like, fantastic people. Yeah, a great energetic best. show, a real party. And so, Ducks. That was great. Oh, yeah, hello. And then we also saw um, Raw Raw Riot, mm -hmm. who were They're really cool. phenomenal. Yeah, we're we're playing with them in uh, in New York at the beginning of April. We're really excited for that show. And then uh, we had the treat of seeing uh, Ockerville River. Finally. Yeah, after a long, long wait of them never touring Canada, um, we got to see them, and they were like beyond expectations. Are there any um, musicians that you really aspire to go on tour with, or some like dream musician? I mean, we, there's lots of bands that we love, but I mean, I almost think that if someone, I mean, if someone came along tomorrow and said you're going on tour with Radiohead, that'd be great. But I also, I think I'd be terrified. Yeah. I mean, that's actually been a popular scary. response to this question. I've asked a few different bands because they're the best band, and everybody knows it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. They're just like such an incredible band. But it's the whole thing of like meeting your idols. Like you kind of don't want to as much like you do in a way in like a fantasy and like think like oh having a beer with Tom York or something and talking about world politics but like in reality I would poop my pants and it would just be a really terrible situation there you have it. so um, yeah if we could just like steer clear of that until I feel comfortable that I would have a nice thing to say with him then that would be now on that talking world politics note, do you guys feel like as musicians you have any sort of responsibility to promote social change or give a message across and do you guys consciously um, put that into your lyrics and into your music and, and what you put out in the world? No, I mean, it's really weird. For, for me it's really weird because I mean, part of me really thinks that, our, I mean, we're entertainers basically. Our job is to make, uh, I don't know, provide entertainment for people and part of me thinks that entertainers, be they musicians, actors, artists or whatever, shouldn't have a responsibility to do anything other than entertain. But then another part of me thinks that, you know, you're given this platform, I mean, whether, I mean, we don't deserve to speak for anyone and we're just stupid kids, but, you know, you, you have that platform and like it or not, you, you do have some position of influence. And so part of me thinks that, yeah, you should probably use that for the powers of good. Uh, but we don't, we're not a political band at all. I mean, it's hard for me. I'd like to be, but I'm 20 years old and yeah. I just, as terrible as it sounds, you know, I hang out with my girlfriend and I go on tour and I have fun and I, you know, I watch TV and I just, I should be thinking about the world around me more than I am, but I don't know. The fact of the matter is that we're just having fun. I mean, our, our lyrics aren't political at all. I mean, it's all just... People think they are. There are some of our lyrics that I've definitely heard interpreted as that, which is cool, but that's not what they're written about. Yeah, it's neat in that way that our lyrics can be that subjective, I guess. Like, I think that's way better for a song where someone could read in what they want to and their own interpretation than like us saying, like, oh, this is what this song's about. And so if someone wants to read a political message into our lyrics, then yes, sure. I'll fly. You'll support that? Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thanks you so much for uh, sitting in the swan with us and it's sitting beautiful. out on the dock. Yeah, it is a beautiful day here in Austin. It's a lovely skyline. And our very last interview, so we're signing off. Jen Art Pulse. See you later.